so uh, thank you sir so i uh, now i would like to go for uh, the questions from the audience uh, so over to the audience to uh, raise their questions i got uh, one question uh, from one person asking uh, uh, important facts to consider when uh, uh, when creating a research proposal so if uh, uh, maybe we can i i, I would ask uh, professor saman halgam get to uh, briefly answer this question important facts to consider when creating a research proposal sir you are muted sorry um in any research proposal and um, expectation is that you provide a research question that you try to solve so and it has to be clearly mentioned this is the research question i'm trying to solve but before that you provide a background what leads to that research question so that is a demonstration of you having research having uh, done your homework so and you have to provide small literature review and uh, that leads to that the research question or multiple research questions that you plan to attempt in in your proposal and that is a sort of basic structure and then i would be looking at uh, uh, you know in in your research question do you have an idea how to solve that you you wouldn't but do you have a clue which direction you're going to solve this problem right so that that's the sort of thing i would be looking at in a research proposal Thank you, sir. Uh, any other questions from the audience? You can use the chat to ask uh, questions, so uh, our resource persons can uh, answer there as well. I think most of the questions we already have answered them in the chat itself. So yeah, yeah. Answered plenty of them, like about 18 questions. So. so there are about 18 and yeah, a lot of questions uh, being answered. So there's one question, do we need to have well thought out plan for research question if we are writing a research proposal? I think, yes. Maybe I could maybe I could add a little bit to that. I mean, I think building going on from what someone said, when you have a research proposal, you've got to have a research question, but you know, remember that you're it's going to be reviewed, right? It's, so you need to write to with the idea that it's going to be reviewed, which is important that you um, you know set the tone out, the introduction, the background to your research problem in, in a way which a, a, a fresh graduate or a new research student or somebody with a master's at least can understand the fundamental reason of what you're proposing and why it is important, right? Um, and then the solution you're trying to, 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 to do or what the, the, the route you're trying to explore. Um, and then for grant awarding bodies, there are two things which are important, I think. You know, first of all, um, I think in Sri Lanka, but also in, increasingly in, in the West, um, the whole idea of the, the lone scholar um, going after a problem and uh, you know, working away with one research student or a postdoc is becoming um, more and more rare. You know, that, that type of funding is becoming extremely difficult. So you need to have some relevance. And you know, if you can build a research team, not just one person, but two or three people attacking a problem of relevance, which, you know, what do I mean by relevance, which is a, 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 a an urgent problem, uh, which, which you can, you know, which of societal importance. Okay, so I mean, and these, these problems, there are many, and there are some of them are a lot of, very difficult and not understood. Um, but you can say, I mean, it can be water purification in, in my area, I could argue. I mean, there are a lot of people working on it, but you, you know, the moment then you can see that the public money going after some research area of relevance and then the return on the investment of the public on investing in this research 
you know, if those things are apparent, then the chance of your grant getting, um, you know, funded is, 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 is much higher, I think. But I'm not arguing against doing pen and pencil research, you know, where you, you know, just do the lone scholar work. It, you know, it is important. That is actually why, for, at least for academics, that's why we became academics, <laughs> to be lone scholars. But unfortunately, you know, the opportunity to be lone scholars are becoming less and less. You know, you, we have, um, you know, cooperative, corporate research is important. And so in Sri Lanka, I would say, you know, you should think about collaborating between universities. You know, I mean, I, I, I find that in Sri Lanka, you know, you talk about collaborating with universities outside Sri Lanka, but you don't collaborate with universities within Sri Lanka. You know, I mean, so you know, if you're like Morotu and Peradini together, you know, you should go after a big problem together to the two engineering faculties, right? You know, and I, and I think that's, those are where the opportunities are, in my view. <laughs> yeah, Gahan made a very good point. I, I have observed exactly the same thing in IITs in India. So as an external visitor, I had to connect one IIT with another IIT to work together at some point because they had the expertise, but they didn't put it together. So uh, I don't want to analyze why, but I think you have to get rid of that barrier. So one, one other point, people ask about impact factor, right? And these impact factors differ from area to area. So if you have access to Scopus, I don't know how good that is, but there is something that we use in grant applications is called field weighted uh, impact factor. I think that's what it's called. So it's a field weighted. So that means um, if you have a one, that means your paper is uh, just like anyone else, equally well cited in your field. If you have three, that means you are much better. Your paper is much better cited than your own subfield. So the, the um, and um, we, we use that in our grant applications, and that is what they want to see the field weighted impact factor. Yeah, uh, so another question asked from the audience, what are some mistakes that make a grant proposal turn down? Uh, I would see sometimes like relevance to the maybe to the national national relevances in, in Sri Lanka it is a big thing national relevance so over to the uh, panel to add more points yeah just to add uh, because it's in Sri Lanka context uh, so national relevance yes and also about the mostly the computer science related uh, the research proposals uh, were not very attractive to the like the funding agencies the reason being it's uh, looked at isolated uh, in, in in isolation so uh, like uh, uh, prasanga was saying at the very beginning i also uh, re-emphasize on that point we should look at how we computer science can come in uh, into multidisciplinary research uh, where uh, we can find a lot of relevance uh, to uh, the uh, the national importance so if we can bring that aspect in, so if uh, the, the the question, the answer to the question is yeah. So if you uh, uh, do isolated research, and if uh, that was brought up again by the other panelists as well, so uh, more uh, interdisciplinary research, more uh, relevance uh, is what is seen now uh, more like right? yeah. So that's one of the main aspects. Yes. And one thing I I see uh, in the Sri Lankan context. Uh, we are, we are looking for uh, applied research and uh, national relevance, but at the same time, I think uh, there should be a way to uh, somewhat facilitate uh, some uh, foundational things. But in Sri Lankan context, I, I feel uh, in, the, in the field of computer science, we are lacking that. We don't have much funding for theoretical research on algorithms, that sort of things. But Sometimes in uh, natural sciences field, they have, but in computers, computer science, I think that's because of uh, not a lot of people are involved in uh, like this uh, administration of this funding and these things in uh, funding bodies, that sort of thing. But what I feel, any thoughts? Yeah, maybe uh, maybe I, my, I, I should share my experience in Sri Lanka. Um, and also it's a, it's a slight lament actually, because I think for example, um, you know, Sri Lankan universities, I don't know whether anybody does any mathematical research anymore. I mean, there's, there's no maths departments. I mean, I don't know what do they do in the maths department. 
know, it's like doing A-level plus teaching, I think, is what they do now. Yes. But, you know, in, in times gone by, Sri Lankans had, Sri Lanka had very good mathematicians, you know, used to, you know, had, had world renown. Uh, now, maybe a lot of the uh, undergraduates who are very good in maths are going to do engineering and computer science. Um, so, and so I, I think for a science base of a country, it should not be just applied. You should have a, a strong base in the fundamentals of mathematics, especially, I think, and, and some of the uh, pure sciences. It doesn't have to be extensive, but it has to be good um, and have a strong representation. So I, you know, I, 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 I don't. I, is there a pure mathematics department at Peradeniya? I mean, I know in Colombo there is, but uh, um, I mean, I. So I think, the, 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 you know, in in the Western countries, they are still considered very core subjects, core strengths um, of their research base. Um, so I think you should try to influence whoever you can to support these fundamental research. Um, you know, in computer science, of course, there's a lot of fundamental uh, research you can do on the science part of it, right? Uh, you know, whether it could be cryptology or you know, brain science plus you know, computation. You know, so there are many things you can think about, but I think I would urge you to uh, speak to your funding bodies um, to at least have a, a portion of the research, not a majority of it, but, you know, to ring fence 10 or 20% of the research for this type of fundamental research. And uh, also another uh, thing I, 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 I have seen, uh, con uh, countries like India, they are uh, kind of uh, funding their uh, early career researchers who completed uh, PhDs and not the PhDs, but postdocs in foreign countries and top, uh, top tier places to come back to India and uh, continue their research for five years. That's kind of, kind of a contract kind of thing. And then uh, they will give the opportunity to them to settle down in Indian uh, university, IIT or something like that. So I, I, I feel that is a very good, uh, good way of attracting people, the best people who went out from the country to back to the country. So uh, what are the other opportunities like other like uh, setups in other other countries you you have experienced in sort of like that. Well, I, I think the Indians are just following what the Chinese have done for ten years now with their their schemes to bring back their graduates. Um, and in Sri Lanka, when we had the Sri Lanka Institute of Nanotechnology, we did a similar thing. We were you know able to attract maybe twenty to thirty Sri Lankan PhDs to come back and work in in that area. But you know this whole thing is. You know, th these are all nice things to do, but it, it then relates back to the, the amount of money and wealth there is in a country. You know, you have to have these schemes, you've got to have enough funding for research and more on top of that um, to attract people back. And I, you know, I regret that the Sri Lankan, in the Sri Lankan context, I think the, the wherewithal for these types of programs are just not there, I think, at the moment. But if, they, if it is possible, of course, it should be done. Okay, uh, so I would uh, thank uh, for the panel and uh, I'm uh, giving the control to the main control room. Over to you, uh, Trividya. Uh, 